Welcome everybody back to my glorious door. <laughs> hey, in my last video about being persuaded by the truth, I referenced a scripture, Ephesians 4.14, where it talked about unscrupulous men and how they are in the world and how they are trying to to deceive people. They're trying to cover up the truth with lies um, in order to lead us astray, lead people astray, lead whoever will listen to them astray. Astray from what? Astray from the right path, astray from the truth, astray from doing the right thing and thinking the right thing. And today I really wanted to just kind of take that unscrupulous men part and focus on that because I really feel like God has something to say on that specific piece. So I'll see you in about seven seconds. <laughs> okay. So today, again, I've got another scripture for you I'm going to read because I really want you to see what God says in his word about this specific issue because you know, you look at, I'm not going to try, I'm trying not to get super political here, but you look at a lot of politicians, I'll say, and we think, man, they're just so wicked. They, You know they're lying. You know they're trying to cover up what happened over there. Um, you know they're trying to cover this up. You know they're lying over, and you see that, and you go, man, that's just wrong. How can they do that? A problem in that is that we can tend to think that that's what's going on now. When the truth of the matter is, it's been going on since Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel. Ever since Adam and Eve took the bite of that daggone fruit. Mm. <laughs> this kind of wicked deception has been going on. The very reason God flooded the earth, in which only eight people were saved in a boat, is because of the kind of wickedness that I'm going to talk about here. The kind of wickedness that is perpetuated by unscrupulous men who care nothing for the truth. And so I'm going to uh, read from Deuteronomy 13, 1 through 5. It says, If a prophet arises among you, or a dreamer of dreams, and gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder he foretells to you comes to pass, and if he says, let us go after other gods, gods you have not known, and let us serve them, you shall not listen to the words of that prophet or to that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your mind and heart and with your entire being. The Lord is testing you to see if you're just being a religious Christian. He's testing you to see if you're just a churchgoer. He's testing you to see because when these politicians creep up and you have so many Christians saying, yeah, I love that politician. I love that politician. That politician is awesome. We're going to vote them in. And they are desperately wicked. They lie like breathing air. Um, they're okay with just about anything on the liberal platform. Um, and it's just like, really? That's what you're going to buy into? That's what you're going to wave your banner for? It's like, um, <laughs> you really want to do that? Because it's, but, but God does, but God, it's not necessarily God's doing that, but God's using the situations throughout history to see, are you really going to be for the truth or are you going to be for a man or a woman? Okay. Um, it says, you shall walk after the Lord your God and reverently fear him. Fear does not mean being afraid of him. That's not what that fear means. It means to be in awe of him, to be enamored by him, to be in love with who he is and just being like, whoa, you're so awesome. I, the only thing I care about is the truth. That's what it means to reverently fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And you shall serve him and cling to him not to a candidate or a pastor or a leader of your organization. But that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death 
because he has talked rebellion and turning away from the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage. Now, you see, he's still talking to people. He's talking to the, to the people who saw God part the sea. He's talking to the people. This is Moses, by the way. He's talking to these people who he led out of the out of Egypt, and God did amazing things just to get them out of Egypt. And then once they got out of Egypt, he still did amazing things to them, but all they did was whine and complain about what God was not doing for them. Man. And that's kind of like what people do. I have to say this, because that's a lot of times what people end up doing with the government. They whine and complain about what the government's not doing for them. They whine and complain about what the rich are not giving them. It's like, well, how did they become rich in the first place? They didn't inherit it. They worked their butts off. What are you working on? It's like, anyway, I, can, I don't want a rabbit trail. So, that man has tried to draw you aside from the way in which the Lord your God commanded you to walk. So shall you put the evil away from your midst. Okay, so basically, what is he talking about there in the scripture? He's talking about a person, an unscrupulous person, coming in with all this charismatic, woo, -woo, -woo and you're like, whoa, that's really awesome, I'm going to follow you. And God's like, no, don't do that. Don't follow a person, follow me. I will let you know the truth. And it's like, but the I think these kind of men are almost necessary because... Because it does, it helps test, it helps to show who the real believers in Jesus are versus the false. It helps to show whose heart is truly for God, even back in the days of Moses in Egypt, whose heart is really for God and whose heart is not. <clears throat> whose heart is fully persuaded by the truth and whose heart is just, I just want what I can get out of this deal. You know, because that's what that's really the foundation of a religious Christian is they want to identify with Christ, but they don't want to bow the knee to Christ. I think it's in Luke six forty six. I'm going to look that up later, and if it's wrong, I'll put it up there. But the Lord Himself, Jesus looked that He looked at this one particular person and said, "Listen, why do you call me Lord, Lord, but you don't do what I say?" You know, Jesus said on that on that final day of his appearing and judgment and all that stuff, he said, many, listen to these words that Jesus said. He said, many will come to me on that day and say, Lord, Lord, didn't I do all this stuff for you? And didn't I do this? And didn't this? Da, 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 da? And, and Jesus is going to be like, I don't know you. Get away from me, you worker of iniquity. Now, if you study that word iniquity, it means you basically, you're a worker of your own plan of life. You did your own thing. You know, God said, hey, come with me. If Jesus was like, follow me. Follow me in regards to the truth. Follow me in regards to how you think. Follow me in regards to how you live. Let the truth persuade you and let that persuasion determine the actions of your life and the words of your mouth. You know, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you. That's Psalm 19, I believe it is. These are not these are not new things that God's revealing to the earth. No, he's just capstoned them in Jesus. You know, like Hebrews said, God's revealed himself through many revelations in times past. But now, post Jesus' death and resurrection and ascension, he's just speaking through the Holy Spirit, plain old simple truth. And he's basically saying, come on, you guys, you need to hurry up because this is getting ready to wrap up really quick. And either you're going to be a pretend Christian persuaded by the charismatic prophet and dreamer and woo -woo of the day, or you're going to really be after my heart because I'm going to test you. <laughs> there is a test. I'm telling you there's going to be a test. So you better study up for it. You be your life better agree with it. Your life and what you say and what you're thinking and how you act should live up to that. This is not a religious Ten Commandments and you need to be checking all the boxes and you need to be performing well. No, this is a heart issue. You know, 
I mean, I remember back in, I was it like 15, 20 years ago, channeling and spiritualism. It was a big deal and everybody was on TV watching John Edwards and, you know, do all of his psychic stuff. And I'm like, that ain't no psychic stuff. That's just demonic internet. That's why he can't, these channelers, they can't tell you specific things. They can't answer specific questions. They'll even tell you themselves like, well, I just get the information and I'm just giving out what I'm given. That's it. Because those demons are trying to use him to influence you to to uh, be wowed and enamored and follow after the channeling way. The way of channeling and spiritualism and astral projection and all these other spiritual things that are leading you away from the truth. Um, even believers. You know, I know I know people who were believers at one time, but then they're now led away into this weird, creepy stuff. And it's like, that is the devil. But, hey man, your heart was tested and you failed. You showed that you're not for God, but it's never too late. It's never too late to recognize where you're at and be like, wow, you know what? I need to come to terms with where I'm at and I need to come back to God. Never too late. It is never too late to do that. That's the glory of, of the cross of Jesus. It is never too late. As long as you are alive, it is never too late to get right with God, come back to God, start living life His way, the way He wants you to. And, and uh, well, before I wrap it up, I want to talk a little bit about the Antichrist. I just want to throw a little P.S. in there and that, you know, the Antichrist is going to do that. He's going to come with all kinds of signs and wonders. It says scripturally, even Jesus says this, he's going to come. It's like, I'm coming to you from the Father and you won't listen to me. But another one is coming after me and him you will listen to. He was speaking to the world. He was speaking to those who refused to believe in him. He was saying, you're not going to believe in me because I am the truth. You're going to reject me, but another one's going to come with signs and wonders and sugary lies, and you're going to totally listen to him because the world listens to its kind. And followers in Christ listen to him. That's why you can put a religious Christian together that can say all the right things and say, oh, I believe in God and the Bible and all that stuff. And you put a person like me in the mix who's got an actual relationship with God and can hear the Holy Spirit right now in the moment and speak to that person. You get... You, you, there is no comparison. That un, the religious Christian is shown up to be shown up for what they are, you know. So don't be that. You know, you don't want to be a religious Christian. You want Christian. You want to be persuaded by the truth, not just an acknowledger of maybe that the Bible might be real parts of it. Oh uh, yeah, that yeah, Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Yeah, I believe that. Why? Why not? You got to believe something, right? No, that's religious Christianity right there. Is the Holy Spirit in you? Have you been born again, as Jesus said you need to be? Um, and are you following him? Or are you following yourself? Are you working out your own plan of life and you're working your own iniquity, as Jesus calls it? And you don't really know him. Because, see, Jesus knows who knows him. You can deceive and pretend with every other human being on the planet and convince them that you are what you think you say you are, but there is one person you are never going to convince of anything else but the truth, and that's Jesus himself. He knows if you know him or not. Jesus knows that I know him, and I know a lot of people who Jesus knows they know him, but there's a lot of people out there, man, that call themselves Christians, and it is strikingly obvious to someone like myself that, by God, you do not know him at all. You have no relationship with him at all. And, you know, there's different levels of maturity in Christ and all that stuff. But there's some people that they say stuff like that, that, well, there's different levels of understanding. I was raised by that mess. And it's like, well, there's not any different level. There's different levels of maturity, but there's no different levels of understanding that are going to say Jesus is okay. And then you get to this divine, enlightened understanding that Buddha is okay, too. No. There's no such thing as that level of understanding. It's, it's Jesus and then growing to know him more and more and more. See, because the more you know the Lord, the more you mature, the more you get on different levels. You know, the bottom line is, but you've got to start at being born again. You have to actually be in him and know him. You know, outside of him, you're just deceived. So now I'm going to wrap it up. And I'm going to say, part two, <laughs> be persuaded by the truth. 
pass the test, guys. Don't don't follow the dreamer of dreams and, you know, Barack Obama, the next black messiah. Yes, I'm going to follow him. I never have to pay my electric bill again, y'all. Oh, my gosh. Really? It's like, you, you got to be joking me. It's like, there, no, there is no messiah apart from Jesus. There is no great solution giver apart from Jesus. There isn't one. It's just Jesus. And you've got to be persuaded of that truth. You've got to be persuaded, persuaded of what the Bible says. Okay? So, be blessed, guys. Until next video, uh, I hope you will subscribe to the channel. And we can continue to go on this journey of understanding the Lord together. Okay? See you guys later.